O'Reilly Factor is on tonight. If the video is genuine, we are sickened by this brutal act taking the life of another innocent American citizen. Another outrage at the hands of those ISIS thugs as a second American journalist is reportedly beheaded. Will his death force the president's hand? We'll have the latest on the growing ISIS threat with Charles Krauthammer. Once you give Americans a chance, they have never, 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 ever let their country down. It's time to take back America. Vice President Joe Biden unleashed. But is it all for show, or is he prepping for a White House run in 2016? What the hell are we talking about? A shocking celebrity scandal that could affect you. A hacker posts sensitive photos of celebrities, and the entertainment world is up in arms. But some say it's their own fault. We'll have a factor investigation. Caution, you are about to enter the no-spin zone, and the factor begins right now. I'm Laura Ingram, in for Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Let's get straight to our top story. Of course, news reports say that a second American journalist, Stephen Sotloff, who had been threatened with death at the hands of ISIS thugs, has in fact been beheaded. His death follows that of James Foley, who was killed just last month. Today, Fox News James Rosen asked the State Department spokeswoman if this reported second beheading will escalate the administration's approach to ISIS. Does the Obama administration consider this an act of war? Uh, we certainly, uh, I'm not going to put new labels on it, uh, James. I would say we certainly consider uh, this act, this reported act, the act of uh, the killing of James Foley as a horrific uh, terrorist act. But there are now reports that President Obama has known for at least a year that ISIS posed a dangerous threat, not only to Iraq and to Syria, but to our own vital interests. And still, the president admits he's still looking for a strategy to address the threat. And now even some Democrats are criticizing the president. I think I've learned one thing about this president, and that is he's very cautious. Maybe in this instance, too cautious. With us now to comment on this rather strange Obama doctrine, if that's what you can call it, Dr. Charles Krauthammer. So Charles, uh, I know we don't have a strategy yet, but uh, analyze this current situation uh, for us after, again, another horrific beheading. The administration responds saying it's horrific. Well, we know that. Well, look, it's a non-response. This, the video, like the one that preceded it, was called a message to America. And it, Obama is directly addressed this as a challenge to him. We know with the first video, Obama made a statement. Then he went off and had a round of golf. I wonder if when he lands in Estonia, he'll have a round of golf as well. This is a president who refuses to act, as you say, refused to act on a year's worth of intelligence because he fits his view of the world his understanding of reality to fit his own ideology. This is a president pledged to basically withdraw the U.S. from the world. This is the anti-Bush. A, because he believes America that doesn't have the moral right to intervene in the world. He's not a believer in American exceptionalism. In the confessional tour he made at the beginning of his presidency abroad, he talked about all of our sins. Second, because he prides himself, there's a streak of narcissism in him, as a man who ends wars, historically important. You know, he says, I ended the war in Iraq. Of course he didn't. David Petraeus ended the war in Iraq. He threw away the fruits of victory. And lastly, because he cares about domestic affairs, above all, and what he sees is public opinion, which very correctly and understandably does not want to intervene abroad unless led by a president who explains why, and thus he's been utterly passive. The passivity continues. Although the new poll that came out, NBC Wall Street Journal, 54% of Americans said we haven't been aggressive enough in response to the Islamic threat. So in the absence of presidential leadership, the public sees the brutality, understands now more fully what's happening, not only to our vital interests, but to you know the Christian uh, people, to the other uh, religious minorities. Amnesty International called it a, a, an ethnic cleansing, I think, of epic proportion, what's happening right 
right now in Iraq after we were there, Christians were living there, 1. you know, 2 million Christians. Now it's down to 600,000 people, Charles. And we were led to believe by this administration that they were blindsided. So it's willful, it's 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 willfully telling the American people, "Oh, this was this this was kind of surprising to us. It was JV." But they weren't blindsided, were they, Charles? But it's willfully telling himself. Obama creates a reality around himself. He's surrounded by sycophants, nobody of any stature in his administration who will tell him he's wrong, who will tell him when he gets the briefings for over a year on ISIS and the growing threat that it is not something he can ignore. And the reason there's been a shift in public opinion is that public opinion today is seeing what was obvious five years ago that when you withdraw American power from the world, whether in Iraq, in Syria, whether you go into Libya and then abandon it, whether with Russia, wherever it is, there are consequences and there is setting into Americans, the reason you cited that poll, the reason it shows Americans are believing that we aren't aggressive enough, there's a sense of shame. We are the great power in the world. We see all these atrocities and now challenging America with atrocities involving Americans who are cruelly beheaded and killed. Would you even respond to that video today in the way that, that the State Department did? I mean, they came out, DOD comes out. It, it, it's kind of like tit for tat. You know, we behead someone, you respond. I mean, it's almost like, of course, I worked for President Reagan, you were around then. You almost want our actions to speak louder than any words. And he, you know, we, we have kept up the airstrikes. They got a big, uh, big, uh, uh, you know, Islamic uh, leader in Somalia. We killed Gadan uh, yesterday, it looks like. They released that information. So they have had some pretty big strikes. What's important is not how we respond immediately afterwards. Remember, after 9-11, George Bush did not respond. He didn't toss a useless missile into an empty tent in Afghanistan the way the Clinton administration had done after the bombings of the embassies in Africa. He waited a month and then he rallied. He had a tremendous operation with a hundred days. It took down the fully entrenched government in Afghanistan. What the world wants to see is actions, not words. The president's words don't mean anything. He establishes a red line in Syria. It doesn't exist. Nothing happens. He's now in Estonia. He says, we will stand with the Estonians. That doesn't mean a thing. He stood by. He hasn't even supplied the Ukrainians with weapons to defend themselves. But Charles, shouldn't... It's the, got to be action. In the region, shouldn't we have the powers in the region also step up? We hear about the moderate Muslims. They're all against this. We don't hear it. We don't see the real tangible evidence of their uh, meaningful assistance. I'm sure there's stuff going on behind the scenes. We want our European partners involved. America has to lead, but I think the American people are like, okay, we have a lot on our backs, we'll do it, but we want some other people involved. That's what the other side says. That's what the liberals clearly want before right. we get involved. That's the work for the one thing the Obama administration prides itself on, diplomacy. You know, George W. was crude and blunt, and we are subtle and sophisticated, we can do diplomacy. The best example is to go forward. Here's a president, George Bush Sr., who organized the coalition, but only after he said, this will not stand, we will lead. Obama never says that. Charles, thanks so much. And congratulations to Dr. Krauthammer, whose book, Things That Matter, is now in its 10th month on the bestseller list. Wow. And next on the rundown, how should the beheading of Stephen Sotloff change President Obama's strategy in confronting ISIS? We're going to get reaction from one of the region's top experts in a moment.